What's up guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be continuing our uh, performance series and what I'm going to be talking today is going to be about level streaming. And so, um, level streaming is basically um, load and unload without loading screens uh, parts of the level. So basically, you can save a lot of performance. Imagine that we are like um, in an area like this and then we enter a door over here and then we're going to go inside the house or something. While we are inside the house and we cannot see this, this level, we're just going to be basically unloading this level from the game and basically we're going to uh, basically steal away all the performance that we are uh, using for this level, we're going to basically be able to use it for this one. So we're going to save all these polygons and the memory and all that stuff um, because this level no longer exists, it's going to be unloaded. And then when we, when we get back of the house and we go into the normal level, this level will load up and the house will unload and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you how to do that and uh, let's start. So for, first of all I'm going to have to create a couple of triggers because um, we're going to have to trigger this through blueprints. I'm going to go into blueprints and I'm just going to create a new actor, a uh, blueprint class actor. And I'm just going to call this um, I guess trigger. Yeah, I'm just going to call it trigger, never mind. And I'm just going to do, I guess I'm going to go trigger uh, load and then load. I'm going to have one for loading and another for an unloading, so it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and I'm just going to I guess, I don't know how I'm really going to do this. I probably could start a new level, but I'm not going to do that. You know what, so you can see stuff happening. I'm actually going to just delete this wall. And I'm just going to uh, go over here to the geometry. I'm going to drag a box. I'm going to make it 20 on the Z, so you make a little bit of a platform. I'm going to press N to snap this to the ground. And let me just make it a little bit bigger, like that. There you go. So imagine, basically I'm going to have to, you're going to have to imagine that there is a door in the middle of all this. Like in the middle of this there's a door and that we can enter and basically go to this side. Because uh, when you do level streaming, you always going to have to consider uh, the on the level design you're gonna have to when you are loading or unloading a level you do not want the player to see it so you're basically gonna have to uh, hide that with like doors or make like a closed area or like a cinematic or something while you do the load and unloading uh, that's the best way to handle this basically I'm gonna go and I'm gonna drag a trigger load I'm gonna double click both of these open I guess I can just use one for this, for this example. I'm just going to use the trigger load, it doesn't matter. And uh, no, I'm actually going to use both, it's a little bit easier. So let's just have both of these open. And I'm going to go into the trigger load, I'm going to add the box component. This is going to be the collision that's going to interact with the player. I'm going to drag this into the world. And I'm basically going to put it here, I'm going to scale it so it covers the entire area. So what I'm going to make it to do is when I step over here, so before the door, I'm going to make the other level appear. And then let's imagine we are on the other side of the door. And when I trigger this, this entire area is going to disappear. So I'm just going to make something very simple. Uh, I'm going to just duplicate this floor to this side. So we basically have a little platform we can cross. And we just can imagine our door over in the middle. And now I'm just going to have to go into the trigger and load and also create a box collision. There you go. Let's just uh, scale this out. And now we can go ahead and basically I'm going to go press on the box and I'm going to go down to the event and I'm going to go uh, non-component begin overlap
Then we're going to the trigger and load and do the same. And on begin overlap, there you go. So when we do the trigger load, we're going to want to and load this level and load this one. I'm actually thinking because we probably, this is probably not the best way to do this, but I think it's the simpler to explain for our starters. So yeah, I'm going to do it this way and now um, before we do any of the blueprint stuff, I'm going to have to introduce you to um, something that is called levels over here in uh, you got you can have your persistent level. If you don't have this window over here, you can go into the window over here and press levels. When this appears, you're gonna have your persistent level. That is the level that is open right now, and you can just go over here and basically. Mm, I think it's one of these buttons. There you go. You can go into levels and go into create new. And when you create new, you're going to be prompted to save this. I'm just going to call, uh, I guess, part one. It's going to be, uh, you see that there is like below, it's like an hierarchy of the persistent level. Now this part one doesn't have anything assigned. So you're going to have to select uh, everything that you want from there. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select every static mesh over on this side. There you go. And I guess the player, no, the player, it doesn't include. So just include the static meshes over to this side. And basically, right click on the part one. And uh, I think we can go move selected actors to level. And now we can see if you click on this little light to hide it, you can see that everything on this side disappeared. And now I'm going to go into the persistent level. Uh, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this part two. And over to this part two, now we're gonna have to move uh, this side of the level. So just click on the static meshes over to this side and move select the actors to level. And you can see uh, by adding this. So if I add this part, uh, you can play. Oh, actually they will be hidden by default. Let me see how can I make that. I don't actually remember. Default streaming method. No, I do not want them to always be loaded. I basically want to load this instantly. But I guess we can make that uh, the same way. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to make sure the place where we spawn needs to be loaded by default. So, I'm going to go over into the blueprints and I'm going to open the level blueprint. And then there is an event begin play over here that you can call. And then there's a node that is going to be used for this. So it's going to be called load uh, stream level. And then you can load this. You can call it part one. Uh, I think that's what I called it. Yes, part one. And now make visible after load. And that's just going to be it. What you're going to need to do over here because you want to do this by default. I'm just going to put the character a little bit above so it doesn't fall to the ground. So if you play, there you go, you got your level. And you can go over here, everything is the same. And you can see that there is no level here and it doesn't have any collision or anything. It just simply doesn't exist. Now I'm going to go and make the same thing when we trigger the this, um, this trigger load. So what I want to do is do a stream, so load stream level. I'm actually, actually going to need to unload stream level. So the level that I want to stream is the part 2. And make visible. And the one that I want to stream is the previous one. So I'm going to go into part 1. And that's going to be it for this part. Actually, making this way, you actually doesn't need to have two triggers. You can just put this one in the middle, like when we are passing the door. And I'm just going to delete this one. There's no need for it in this situation. So you can see, if you play, I'm going to go over it. 
This level loads, and the other one disappears, so imagine that I just passed this door. There's like a little cinematic of opening the door, boom, you're on this side. The, this level appears, and the other one uh, disappears. But now if you pass again, it's not gonna appear back. That's because I'm just gonna need to do something called... Uh, I'm not gonna need this blueprint. Before we do this, I'm gonna do a flip-flop. A flip-flop basically makes it... Uh, every, every time this flip-flop is executed, it's going to execute A, and then B, and then A, and then B, and so on and so forth. So I'm basically going to have to reverse this. Control C, Control V. And I'm going to do part 1 over here, and the part 2. Uh, it's going to be the one that I'm going to load. I'm going to compile that and play. And I'm going to go over. I just pass the door. This loads and that unloads, and now I get out of the door. This loads and that unloads. And that's basically it. Now, of course, right now you can really tell the difference. But now imagine like um, an open world game where you have I don't know like a like the your main level that is like the the persistent level. It's your open world level, and then you have like a shit ton of houses or like places you can get into uh, that are super uh, like prop heavy and super detailed. You're not going to want to have all of them loaded at the same time. You want to use this system to have your open world uh, up all the time. And then you're going to want to have all of the other houses deloaded. And you're just going to load the ones, basically, when you go through the door. Like uh, I do in this event, example. So you load this house, you stay in it, you get uh, the rest unloaded. And when you get out of the house, you just open the, load the normal open level, the, the open world level. And basically, using this system, you can have like a hundred uh, sub levels of houses and like places super detailed, and you can have basically no impact on performance because they do not exist; they are not loaded. This is a very powerful way, mixed with lots and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can really, really change a game from like being 20 FPS and super heavy to make the game much lighter and much more enjoyable. So yeah, uh, in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about doing basically this but with landscapes so i'm going to tell you if you have a really really large landscape i'm going to tell you how to uh, basically cut the, that landscape in pieces and load it and then load it um, as you go along the landscape that's used uh, like in fallout and you know uh, mafia 3 gta all that kind of stuff where parts of the landscape gets unloaded and basically streamed like this but it's much more automated and you just need to Basically, divide the landscape with the tool that Unreal has. But I'm going to show you all that in the next video. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, leave them in the comments. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.